So when you talk about not being able to get these goals um, or get these changes made using conventional techniques, what do you have an alternative? Because one of the things, you, I mean, I'll admit with you that fathers should be the supermen who are fighting back. We are the protectors. We should be taught to be warriors for our families and the right things. And yet too often, the ideal male is an emasculated male. I mean, you look at the clothing that they put out. This is the new male clothing or whatever. You're like, I don't, it just sickens me to see that that's how a male is being portrayed. Um, but regardless of, of that part, we are not effective right now. What do we need to do to become more effective? Or is this something that, to be honest with you, I mean, there's times that I think, okay, you know what? We need to go underground. We need to infiltrate. I mean, I, I have my own thoughts about this stuff. And, and I'm not talking about anything illegal, but I'm talking about we need to organize as a community. But you've thought about this, I'm sure, too, because you've dealt with this head on. So what are your thoughts that you can share publicly with us? Um, so uh, my point of view is, is uh, based on uh, direct observation of successes and failures. So if you, the very first success I ever saw against the uh, a media establishment mm -hmm. was uh, something called Gamergate. Have you ever heard of that? I have not. So um, what happened was a bunch of game journalists decided that video games needed to be more female friendly mm -hmm. and that they needed to change uh, how they designed video games and remove a lot of the elements that frankly video gamers really like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, these are kind of like Asperger y uh, video game players. And one of the things that came out of the Gamergate is brother, don't piss off a bunch of Asperger y people because they will own your ass. They went out and got all kinds of evidence of pay to play in the game journalism community, very illegal. People lost their jobs people that were uh, sleeping with journalists to get good reviews, uh, all kinds of just horrible stuff. Um, and when you look at what these Gamergate people did, it was very simple. There was never a leader. Whenever the journalists would attack Gamergate, they would say, oh, so you're the leader of Gamergate. And what they like to do is like, they like to set up a leader, right? somebody that's at the top, and then they they find some problem for them and they knock them down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they want to they want to make one person the emblem of mm -hmm. the movement, and by discrediting the person, they discredit the movement. Right. So everybody in Gamergate just said, "Well, there's no leader. I'm just a video gamer. I'm just a concerned video gamer. There's no leader. Yeah. What are you talking about?" Yeah. So the first principle has to be: there's no leaders. You're not in charge of anybody, and nobody's in charge of you. Yeah. And when everybody, one of the problems we have in, in this in this sort of father's rights movement and the equal shared parenting movement um, and the movement, you know, to save children from this stuff is that everybody wants to start their own organization and build up some kind of big organization. Why? We have yeah. great organization. The, there's no better uh, talk show on this issue than Dad Talk Today. Why start another one? How about we make Dad Talk Today worldwide, global, Make it the one, right? Mm -hmm. You reinforce success, not failure. We have a success, mm -hmm. reinforce it, right? Go do something else where we mm -hmm. need that, right? Mm -hmm. And that talk today, support people doing other things. You see what I mean? Right. Everybody wants to be a leader. So we got to stop doing that. You know, when people ask me, Jeff, are you, and I've been asked this by journalists, are you the leader of a movement to, uh, against uh, transgender transits? No, I'm just a concerned dad standing up for his kid. That's all I am. Right. Nothing more than that. And now they can't discredit the movement. They can't discredit it. That's the first right. thing. Second thing they did is they used swarming tactics. Whenever there was a need for somebody, for a bunch of people to be somewhere, they went. Mostly that was online. Right? And they had the means to communicate with one another to swarm on a target when necessary. Third, they had a secure communication infrastructure. They had a highly encrypted, very secure communication infrastructure only between trusted sources that nobody could break into. How do you keep trusted sources? 
You don't have more than five people you talk to about this stuff. These are people that you go down at, at the pub and drink with that you've known for 20 years. You don't talk to every, you know, the first rule, this is, this is one, we can paraphrase this from Fight Club. The first rule of, of political organizing against these, uh, these well-funded activists is there is no, there is no movement. There is no organization against these activists, right? You remember the Fight Club? First rule of Fight Club is there's no Fight Club, right? There's no such thing. I'm just, I'm just hanging out with my beer buddies, right? And sometimes my beer buddies cooperate with other groups of beer buddies. And there's no way for them to counter that or counter propagandize that. You're talking about people who are, look, these are people who have subverted entire government agencies. They have subverted the military now is doing sex change surgeries for their mm -hmm. military. Owners. These are people who have subverted entire state governments. You don't think they can subvert your little your little 50-50 shared parenting organization, brother? Oh, come on. Let's get real. The only way to be safe is to not have such an organization and to keep everything small, informal. And when we have successes like Dad Talk today, we support it. We swarm on Dad Talk. We should have swarms of people coming in here, right? And we should be doing the same for each other. You know, if, if, if somebody says, hey, I've got a, I've got a, a judge here, why can't we get 200 people to court watch? Right. You know I, I've you never understood that, man. It's so fractured. And even like when, when we very first started Dad Talk, I had a lot of the organizations that came here, and I didn't know who anybody was when I started right. this. I had no idea. And everybody, you know – introduce themselves and I tried to help every organization out there sure. and it, it's nuts. It is nuts. What's went on. And people say, why aren't you unifying with this person or this person or this person? Because there, there is more drama and politics inside of this movement than there is with the opposition. And that is such a shame because until we organize, nothing's going to get done. You know, and we're, we're, we're kicking off next month. We're going to be going all over the country. And my, my plan is to identify the local leaders give them a platform like we're doing right now and show what they are doing. Not about dad talk. Let's show what they're doing with these shared parenting bills. What's going on over there. I, you know, I would want nothing more Jeff that when this goes to trial, I want dad talk today standing outside of the courthouse saying we're going to save James. And that's how you organize. And that's how you get your voice out there. Yeah. But uh, I appreciate yeah. you saying that because we, we put up with a lot and I would, I, I want to work with everybody, but it's uh, everybody wants to start their own podcast and want to start all these other efforts. And sure, which is, we're never going to get anywhere like that. Yeah. I'm like, you know, look, let, you know, let a thousand flowers bloom. Right. Let you want to have your podcast. Do something different than dad talk today. Right. We have that. Right. So that's a solved problem. Do something different. You know, I've thought about, for example, um, you know, bu building a kind of, uh, a podcast or video course on how do you organize in small groups? You know, it seems like that's needed. You know, maybe somebody right. else would do that better than me. If somebody else was doing it, I wouldn't do it. I don't need to right. do it, right? right. Um, you know, uh, the other thing is uh, about Gamergate is they were absolutely relentless. I mean, they were absolutely and totally relentless. And they would never quit. They would go after their enemies. They would, when they designated enemies, they would never quit. They went after those people. Let me give you an example. You remember that Disney actor, I forgot his name. He did that, he will not divide us protest against Trump in New York City. He had like a little area and he had a video and it was called, he will not divide us. And people could like get in front of it and make their anti-Trump statements, right? Um, so there eventually there was violence there from Antifa. So the New York shut that down. So instead, he hung up a MAGA hat on a flagpole at an undisclosed location. He was just going to let it disintegrate in the weather, like the like supposedly the Trump administration would. So um, these uh, these uh, again, it's the Asperger army. I call it right. The, these Asperger this Asperger army said, okay, he's one of our enemies. He was against. He was in favor of changing our video games and messing with our video games, which we like. So they said, okay. So they set up. They set up and watched this hat on this live video feed and watched the hat. And eventually, one day, there was a contrail pattern, and they matched that up with probable uh, flight paths of aircraft flying over. 
And then somebody got satellite imagery and could get an approximate geographical location. And then they sent somebody with a pickup truck out honking the horn until they found the flagpole. They, they took the flag down and, and put a, a, Trump hat, a, a Trump flag up on the, on the pole. Okay? So then he took it down and he put it up on another flagpole in another undisclosed location. They found it on top of a building in Scotland. They are relentless, right? You have to be relentless. You can't just like, you know, if you look at what Jeff Morgan does, Jeff Morgan is relentless. <laughs> he's relentless. He shows up to four or five events a month, sometimes four or five events a week. A week. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This guy, this guy shows up, you know, and it's like Woody Allen said, right? What's the, what's 90% of success? Showing up. Showing up. Yep. Just show up, right? The other thing I think we got to do is we got to stop legitimating. Gamergate was very good at this. Stop legitimating bad politics, right? So we, we do this stuff where we go and testify to boards and we testify to committees and everything, and we do have to do that. We have to recognize, though, that we will participate in systems that are subverted against us. In many ways, our own participation legitimates them. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think we need to go one of two routes. You have the 1960s civil rights movement, which was very effective in achieving change against an entrenched propagandistic enemy. And they did that by aggressive disobedience. Mm -hmm. You don't want to serve black people in this lunch, in this lunch, on um, this lunch counter? Great. I'll have six black people sit at this lunch counter and you have to throw us, get the cops to throw us out, and we'll come back here every single day. Every day mm -hmm. we'll come back. Mm -hmm. Relentlessly, we will come back. If necessary, I'll have six different people come back. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I will not obey your stupid law. I'm not obeying that. Right. 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 The other thing you can do is aggressive obedience. People don't think about that. Aggressive obedience. Sometimes the government wants you to do things and they have stupid laws. And, you know, if you obey them aggressively, it undermines the, the government itself. Yeah. Um, a classic example of this was the Cloward and Piven strategy, which bankrupted New York City. Yeah. We passed all of these um, really fanciful welfare laws, which were well-intentioned, but they were fiscally unsound. So Cloward and Piven, professors at Columbia University, um, uh, created a system to get every single New Yorker to apply for those benefits and bankrupted the city in three months. Yeah. That's aggressive compliance. Yeah. So I think we have to start doing that. I think we have to start saying, hey, um, I'm not obeying an unconstitutional court order, which gags me talking about my children. I'm yeah. not following an unconstitutional court order, which limits uh, my legitimate parent parenting rights. And if the court wants to take that up on appeal, let's do that. Um, we have to stop following unconstitutional laws and create a crisis. 